Hey folks, I'm Demotro. Welcome back to Combo Class, where today I want to tell you about a cool unsolved problem within mathematics. Like some other unsolved questions in math, this one has been around for many years, and over those years, various progress has been chipped away at it, including some recent progress. But unlike some of the other unsolved questions, this one's actually relatively simple to describe. In fact, I'll be able to describe the open question as a single sentence that's an analogy about people at a party, as well as with some simple visual representations. And the answer to this question that some mathematicians are still striving towards will be in a simple form too. It's going to be a two-digit number. In fact, a whole number smaller than 50. Yet mathematicians don't know which whole number that is. The number I'm describing is the fifth of what are called diagonal Ramsey numbers. Now, Ramsey numbers are a type of number that are categorized as R, and then in parentheses, two whole numbers, and the diagonal type are when the two whole numbers are the same whole number. In the case of the fifth one, that would be written as R5, comma, 5. Now, to see what's up with that one, let's look at the diagonal Ramsey numbers leading up to it. It's known that the first one equals one, and the second one equals two, and that the third one equals six. And if you were just looking at the sequence up to that point, you might think, hey, that looks kind of like the factorials. One, one times two, one times two times three. But it's known that the fourth diagonal Ramsey number isn't four factorial, it's 18. Now, if you were looking at this sequence up to that point, you might wonder, well, is each at least some whole number times the last? Like that was times two, times three, times three. Is the next one gonna be some whole number multiple of 18? But it's not. It's not known exactly what the fifth diagonal Ramsey number is, but it has been proven that it's within the range 43 to 48. It's some whole number bigger than 42, but smaller than 49. Similarly, although mathematicians don't know what the sixth diagonal Ramsey number is exactly, it's known that it lies somewhere in the range 102 to 161. And these are ranges that the seventh and eighth diagonal Ramsey numbers are known to lie within. Now to see what it actually means to be a Ramsey number, let's zoom into the case of the third diagonal Ramsey number equaling six and explain this through a little analogy about people at a party. This analogy is often described as a party where each pair of people there are either friends or strangers with each other. But being friends or strangers with someone is a little subjective and not really an on or off thing. So let's make it a little more on and off by imagining that at some party at the beginning, each pair of people either gave each other a high five or didn't. Well, at any party with six or more people, regardless of how the beginning high fives went down, there will always be some subgroup of three people there who all gave each other high fives at the beginning or some subgroup of three people where none of them gave each other high fives at the beginning. To explain that more mathematically, I'm saying that if there are six dots which represent our people, and each of these dots is connected to every other dot by a line that's either blue, which we'll use to mean those two did high five, or all of the ones that aren't blue will be colored red to mean that those two didn't high five, well, we're guaranteed, regardless of how I color these connections, as long as I connect them all with one of these two colors, we're guaranteed 
that we will always have a triangle of three dots that is entirely red along its edges and or that there will be a triangle of dots that's entirely blue along its edges. That'll be the case for any coloration of six dots in this fashion, but not always the case for five dots. For example, if I had a party of five people and they had high-fived each other in this fashion with each high-fiving two others in that way, and these are the connections of the people who didn't high-five each other. Well, now there's no triangle that's entirely red or an entirely blue triangle. And in the analogy, there's no subgroup of three people at this party who either all high-fived or all didn't high-five. Now, if we wanted to know the minimum amount of dots that would guarantee one of those triangles, this coloration here proves it has to be more than five, because this is an example of five dots not having that property. But this coloration of six, although it shows an example of it working for six, doesn't prove that it works for any coloration of six dots. However, we can prove that without too much trouble. Let's imagine six points and fix our attention on one of them. From that point, it's connected to five other things with two possible colors, meaning that it must have at least three connections of the same color. If it only had up to two connections of each color, there would be a line missing with five total it needs to connect to. And so let's put blades of grass to signify whichever color this arbitrary starting one must have at least three lines coming from it that are the same color as each other. Now let's look at the three it was connected to by that color. If any of those two are connected to each other, that will form a triangle with the original. However, if none of the three are connected to each other, the three form a triangle of the other color between each other. That proves that any six dot coloration must have at least one of those single colored triangles in it. Now the fact that any six dot coloration will have a subset of three dots that are all connected with the same color, but that that's not the case for less than six dots, is why R33 is said to be six. These threes represent three dots connected red or three dots connected blue. Or in our analogy, three people who all high-fived or three people who all didn't. And the minimum that makes that always true is given as the Ramsey number. In this case, six. So going back a bit, this second diagonal Ramsey number was asking, what is the minimum amount of dots such that regardless of which of these colorations you use of reds and blues, you're guaranteed either two will be connected blue or two will be connected red. And it only takes two dots for that to be the case because those are the two possible colorations. And in either case, you do have two of them that are the same color with their connection. Somewhat trivial. But to make that the case for three, dots to all share a color, it required six. Otherwise, there were some colorations where that wouldn't be the case. So here, when we look at the fourth diagonal Ramsey number, that's asking, what's the minimum amount of dots such that regardless of which red-blue coloration you use between them, as long as they're all connected one of those colors, you'll be guaranteed a subset of four dots where all of them are connected to each other blue, or a subset where four dots are all connected to each other red. 
Now, proving that one of these numbers shouldn't be lower or establishing a lower bound for it is the easier part because you just have to prove that the number under that has an example that doesn't have that property. A single counterexample can prove that that shouldn't be 17. Here's a picture I drew of 17 dots equally spaced on an invisible circle with each dot connected to the others that are one away, two away, four away, and eight away from it in either direction. And if you pick any subset of four of these dots, there will always be at least one pair of those that are connected to each other and at least one pair that aren't connected to each other. So if we imagine these as blue connections and all of the dots that aren't connected here as having a red line, any four of the dots would have at least one blue line between them and at least one red line between them and couldn't be all the same color. This shows that the fourth diagonal Ramsey number must be more than 17. But proving an upper bound can be trickier because that's saying things about the minimum amount of dots that guarantees any coloration will have that property. And as you start to increase the amount of dots, the amount of possible colorations grows really quickly. Here are all the ways I could connect four dots with two colors like that. Assuming that if I dragged one of these dots somewhere or shifted it around, it would be considered the same, and we just care about how they're connected. Any other visual way I could have drawn four dots all connected with two colors could be simplified into one of these 11 structures. But if I did a similar thing with all of the five dot colorations, there'd be 34. All of the six dot colorations would have 156, and the numbers get really big really quick. Here's some examples. And although with the right computing device, you could test them all with brute force. You could just list all of the possible colorations and show that every single one had that property. But there are so many possible colorations that it's unlikely that a human will ever develop a computer that is possible to test one of these larger ones with brute force. Maybe not even the fifth one. The great mathematician Paul Erdős once said that he thought if aliens came to Earth demanding we give them the fifth diagonal Ramsey number and that otherwise they'd try to exterminate humanity, that we should try and rally up all of the computers and great minds on Earth and that we might have a chance of calculating that, but that if aliens came to Earth saying the same thing about the sixth diagonal Ramsey number, we would have to either give up or try to fight back because there would be no way for all of the computers on Earth put together to calculate which of those numbers it is. Which is funny because the numbers themselves aren't that big, but they're proving things about every coloration of 102 dots or every coloration of 161 dots, which is massive. The further diagonal Ramsey numbers aren't the only ones mathematicians are currently investigating. There's also been progress toward non-diagonal Ramsey numbers like R34, where you have two different numbers separated by a comma. R34 here is asking, what's the minimum amount of dots that guarantees any coloration of it will have some subset where three are all connected blue and or some subset where four are all connected red. And that's gonna be the same answer to the sort of flipped question of what's the minimum amount of dots that guarantees four will be connected blue together or three will be connected red together. It's known that each of these numbers, R34 and R43, are equal to nine, meaning that there are some ways of coloring eight dots that don't fulfill either of these properties, but any coloration of nine dots will fulfill each of these. And in our party analogy, we could say that any party with nine or more people will be guaranteed to either have 
three that all high-fived or four that all didn't high-five. It's also the case that any party of nine will have either four that all did high-five or three that all didn't high-five. And in general, R-A-B will be the same as R-B-A. And if we imagine just flipping these colors, turning all the reds to blues and all the blues to reds, we can imagine how there'd be a sort of symmetry. Here's a chart of some Ramsey numbers with the A value on one axis, the B value on another axis, and it not mattering which axis we call which of these due to a symmetry here. And in these boxes is what a given Ramsey number is either proven to be, like three, four, or four, three, we know is nine, or a range that we just know the Ramsey number falls somewhere within, like that 43 to 48 for the fifth diagonal Ramsey number. And we can see why the ones that had the same number twice are called diagonal Ramsey numbers because they lie on a diagonal here. And many boxes on this table aren't a single known number, just a range. Although over time, mathematicians are able to tighten these bounds. In fact, just in 2017, this range for the fifth diagonal Ramsey number was cut down from including 49 to knowing that it was at most 48. Very recently, there was also progress made toward a general formula where you can plug in whatever Ramsey number you're curious about and know some massive but definitely true size limit, a number that you know that Ramsey number is not larger than. These formulas I'll show here do still generate such large numbers for the upper bounds, they tell you, that they're not going to help us with these cases like the fifth or sixth diagonal Ramsey number but they're pretty cool because they show us that for any size of Ramsey number, we are able to prove some information about a maximum size it can't be bigger than. However, despite many years of work on this problem and many types of progress, we still don't know the minimum amount of guests that requires five of them to have all high-fived or there to be five that all didn't high-five. There are also extensions to this concept, such as multicolor Ramsey numbers, where you use more than two colors between a bunch of dots. Like we could say that R333 means how many dots will guarantee that if every pair is colored with three possible colors, I'll be guaranteed to have a triangle of one of those three colors. And it turns out that's been proven to be 17. Also, one of the more popular massive numbers in math, Graham's number, is actually defined from it originally emerging as an old upper bound that was known as a size limit for a similar problem. Not the exact Ramsey numbers, but a similar enough problem with connectivity that it's within a branch of math known as Ramsey theory. Overall, these questions lie within a branch of math called graph theory. Not graphs like XY coordinate plane graphs, but graph theory deals with sets of points where it doesn't matter where I draw the point, what matters is the fashion in which they're connected. Here's how we could write the question of what this fifth diagonal Ramsey number is in graph theory language, and we can also pose it as a simple question about the minimum party size that would guarantee a trait about its guests. Overall, there's many cool unsolved questions within graph theory, and this is cool because it's one of the simpler to explain ones, and we know that the answer is one of these whole numbers, but who knows if mathematicians will ever prove which of those whole numbers it is. Overall, thanks for joining me here in combo class today. Hope you have a good day and I'll see you in the next episode.